On this edition of Around BCC, our tradition continues as our February program is once again taken over by the students in the Fall 2013 Television Production Program. Thanks, Keith. Welcome to the February Around BCC, produced by the Communications 157 Television Production Class. I am Olivia Marks. And I'm Jason Rowe. As the lives of many people become more and more hectic, the window of opportunity to stay fit and health conscious decreases significantly. Olivia Marks went down to the Bristol Community College Fitness Center to discover all of the exercise and nutritional resources that are provided throughout their gym. Hi, I'm Olivia Marks and right now I'm standing outside of the Commonwealth College Center, or more commonly known as G Building here at BCC. Inside, I had the chance to explore the fitness center and all of the resources it offers its visitors. I even had the chance to speak to a few individuals who frequently use the center about their experience here at BCC's very own gym. The Bristol Community College Fitness Center has been up and running for over 20 years. It is open Mondays through Fridays, 9 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The fitness center is available for use during these times for any students, faculty, or alumni to use free of charge. I heard about the fitness center because last January I was advising and it was like four o'clock in the afternoon and then rather than go across the city to go to the boys club, boys and girls club, I said, well, let me try this place out. And I did and I've been coming here regularly ever since. The gym offers state-of-the-art equipment for both strength training and cardio. They have 16 pieces of cardio equipment, such as ellipticals, treadmills, bikes, and rowers. They also offer 16 stations for individual strength training to help include variety. They have medicine balls, a cable system, in every level of dumbbells you can imagine to help add a challenge to your workout. Each week, different group exercise classes are offered to help motivate students, faculty, and staff. The instructors are welcoming and supportive to all of the individuals who participate in the classes. People think that you need to have a lot of dance experience or be always working out to have a good fitness level to take Zumba fitness classes, but you really don't. Just come on in and as long as you keep moving, you're doing fine. Being able to do yoga, all you really need, and I tell this to everybody, and I always have, is to have a flexible mind. For more information about what is offered at BCC's gym facilities, contact the fitness coordinator, Diane Hamill, at diane.hamill at bristolcc.edu. The Bristol Community College Fitness Center is located within G Building and is open six days a week. It's free for all students, faculty, and alumni to use. It offers many fitness and wellness options and also provides a supportive environment for everyone to be able to focus on their own progress. So don't forget to come by and check it out. My name is Olivia Marks. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Olivia. For more information on how to get involved at the fitness center and to lead a healthier lifestyle, contact the fitness coordinator, Diane Hamill, at diane.hamill at bristolcc.edu or give her a call at 508-678-2811, extension 2517. Bristol Community College is home to an extremely diverse student body. Between all campuses and the activities available at each location, there's almost something for everyone. But what about that small segment of the student body with alternative tastes? 
in underground music. Our very own Jason Rome found a hidden venue for just such music minutes away from BCC's New Bedford campus. Although students here at Bristol Community College can easily get involved with music, the arts, and theater, where can the student with more alternative tastes go to find an enriching experience? We found just such a place in Gallery X, located in New Bedford, Massachusetts, just minutes away from Bristol Community College's New Bedford campus. Gallery X features live music and an art gallery sure to delight those students with more alternative tastes. Gallery X is one of New Bedford's hidden gems. The art gallery venue is part of the Greater New Bedford's Historic District and is owned and operated by local artists. Gallery X is also a non-profit organization and is, barring an event that features live music acts that charge for a performance, free and open to the public. Its mission statement is as follows. Gallery X is a contemporary cooperative art gallery of visual, performing, and literary artists, members, and volunteers. It promotes cultural outreach through community partnerships, educational programs, and monthly exhibits. It acts as an incubator for emerging artists, a venue for established ones, and promotes interaction between them, offering many arts and cultural programs on its own and with other cultural organizations, we attempt to expand the audience for arts and culture in Greater New Bedford. Gallery X has been operating at its current location since 1995, and although it experimented with local music events in the past, only recently found the hardworking and passionate volunteer staff with enough knowledge, experience, know-how, and drive to get things done safely and effectively. At a recent show on October 30th, 2013, our team got the chance to attend a live music event featuring super local artists and bands of the hardcore and post-hardcore genres. Be wary as the names of these bands feature and highlight expletives. Fucking invincible. <laughs> Wolf whistle. Convulsions. among the local acts to be featured in this night's show. This show was a fantastic, fun, and high-energy thrill ride 
of aggressive and passionate music. Gallery X is located at 169 William Street in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Once again, just minutes away from Bristol Community College's New Bedford campus. Gallery X is sure to delight the music and art lover with alternative tastes in all types of underground music, from hardcore to punk to punk rock to post-hardcore. And students interested in attending such an event can contact John Campoli, a volunteer at Gallery X, for upcoming dates and show times. For Around BCC, this has been Jason Rome, signing off. Bro, come on, check it out over here. We got all the things on sale. We got this on sale, we got tapes, we got CDs, we got merch. Come to see me, bro, anytime. Again, students interested in upcoming show dates can contact John Campoli through Facebook message or via direct phone at 508-985-8696. Many people are interested in volunteering in their community, but don't know how to go about it. Cassie Conroy spoke with Jen Boulay, who is the Civic Engagement Coordinator at BCC and helps students find opportunities in the area. Hi, this is Cassie Conroy coming to you from outside the office of Jennifer Boulay, who is the Civic Engagement Coordinator here at BCC. Hi, so I'm Jen Boulay and I'm the Civic Engagement Coordinator for Bristol Community College and basically I end up working with a variety of students who are interested in um, doing either community service or service learning at the college. Community service is when it's not tied to your coursework, it's um, volunteer hours that are put in and with service learning it is tied to your actual coursework so what you're doing is you are serving a minimum of 10 hours over the course of a semester and that will be with a nonprofit agency in the local community. With service learning um, you end up doing a reflection assignment which is um, toward the end of the semester for most classes and what that does is it really connects what you were learning about in the classroom and it applies it to um, the type of volunteerism that you were doing. And with that, afterwards we end up sending out what's called a credit verification to professors to verify that the students did in fact complete all of the requirements. And at that point, students are A, they are invited to our breakfast, which is um, in the spring semester after, um, it's usually after finals. And then they also receive a certificate and they receive a notation on their academic transcript underneath that course stating that it is a service learning component. As long as you can connect the service activity to what you're studying in the classroom. We even had a student that was in a math course that ended up doing service learning and he did that by tutoring one of his classmates. So you are able to connect, network in the community, you know, build a network that way and you're able to make a difference in the community. Um, so there are a lot of benefits both to the individual that's serving and to the recipients that are involved with this project. You know something? It's, it's, it's good to make new friends, right? Yeah. Thanks, Cassie. So if you are interested in volunteering in your community, contact Jen Boulay in L Building, room 117. Taking a closer look at BCC's adjunct faculty, Gavin Bressler sat down with Dr. Michael Boudria to learn a little about his time teaching. Bristol Community College is home to many professors and instructors, as well as adjunct staff. Let's sit down with an adjunct instructor and hear about his experience teaching and the road that led him to it. My name is Dr. Michael Boudria, PhD, and I am adjunct faculty at Bristol Community College and I teach philosophy and ethics from the humanities, but I've also taught psychology and sociology, ancient history, and I've also taught mythology, Old Testament and New Testament. Prior to working at BCC, I was actually a social worker in the city of Fall River, and I used to do group therapy. That was a really sort of exhausting job, as you can imagine. Certainly a lot of energy is put into that. Even though I don't do that job anymore, that career, a lot of the values I learned have carried over into BCC right until this day. I have several uh, unique methods of teaching that I do find to be effective. Not forcing questions has been very useful and not really forcing anything actually in, in the classroom. People will naturally ask questions and people will naturally expand their consciousness. One of the things I talk about in philosophy is that Plato felt that people had to be sort of forced out of the cave of ignorance and into the good or into the light. And I don't agree with that. I think if you just show someone the light, they'll just naturally go there. 
at the beginning of every class, and like literally the beginning of every class, I have them cheer for the subject. So the whole class at once cheers for philosophy, cheers for ethics. It's a little zany, but honestly, it kind of raises the energy level in the classroom, you know, to really sort of be in a happy moment and kind of have joy. I don't see why you can't have joy and learn something. Why does it have to be dour <laughs> all the time? You let your thoughts think. Yeah. Woohoo! All right. Thank you, everybody. That was great. Okay, so a couple. Of and I just think presentation is the the big thing. Teaching is sort of like performing a little bit, and, and I don't mean that even in a negative sense. But you know, it, I think it's more engaging if you're engaging the students directly and simply just a conversation. I actually have transdisciplinary degrees. I have a master's degree in humanities, and so in that degree, I studied the humanities subjects all at once. So things like history, religion, theology, philosophy, art, and literature, all as one thing sort of crisscrossing each other. My second master's degree is actually in holistic leadership. In the holistic degree, I learned lots of things in terms of theories in human development, spiritual development, regarding working with groups, working with individuals. And then my PhD was also in the humanities, where I, again, on a doctoral level, um, expanded from the master's degree. All my degrees together creates a very, very wide level of subjects. There's really no subject I couldn't say something about. And that makes me very versatile as a teacher because I can teach multiple classes even though they're even from different subject matters because I've studied multiple subjects and studied how they interacted. I'm actually a Myers-Briggs personality type practitioner. I'm very familiar with that type of theory regarding personality type. It's one of my passions, actually. I professionally can administer the Myers-Briggs type indicator in order to determine people's personality types. And uh, I also run a forum and a YouTube channel about the Myers-Briggs called NF Geeks. And on the YouTube channel, I have people come on and we talk about personality type and their own personality type. It's a talk show. And the forum is uh, really just a, a place to have discussions about the Myers-Briggs personality type. And it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of subscribers and people on the forum. And it's really made a big impact regarding the Myers-Briggs community that exists on the internet. For more information about Dr. Bugia's personality type talk show, check out NF Geeks on YouTube and Facebook. People have always wondered what students think about BCC. Tim Berize went out and asked some individuals what they would change about the college. My name is Tim Berize and I'm at BCC and I'm about to interview several people about what they like about BCC and what they wish they could change about it. What I like about BCC, it's cheap. Tuition's cheap, it's easy to go to. What I like about BCC is the fact of it, it's convenient. It's where everybody can go. You can, you can have a pulse and you can still go to BCC. You don't need a grade A portfolio. See, I'm gonna go off on a tangent for a second. I come from a high school where they just set you up for life because it's diamond. And as you can see, I'm here obviously because I do not want to pursue electronics. I want to pursue something greater. And I passed out of Diamond with a C average. And I'm happy that I'm here. What do I like about BCC? The professors, or at least the ones I've had so far, they're all really fun, interactive, and they uh, really don't have, have a good time. I, I like that, and I think it's really cool that they're all, all about that. I like a lot of things about BCC, but mostly I like it because when you're here, it doesn't just feel like the teacher's teaching you, and you're just sitting there trying to absorb everything. It feels like the teacher truly likes teaching you. They're really interested in what they're doing. So it's kind of more interactive in the classes rather than what it was like in high school, you know? Like, yeah. do the work and then go home, do more work. No, the teacher truly cares about you. Uh, what I like about BCC is their educational like support. When you have like an issue with, like say, your schedule or whatever, and you need to get fixed, they're pretty good about it. You won't miss too much time. And pretty easy to make things up and yeah it's just pretty convenient. What would I change? Probably the times the computer labs open. A lot of students need to get in here and print things they need and it opens up sometimes same time as their classroom and it's uh, an inconvenience for a lot of people. It's very minor. 
I would say just the food because this semester right so far, a lot of the food is good, don't get me wrong, but it's what it does to you health-wise afterward. And it's probably just me. It probably just happens to me in terms of the stomach. It's just, it doesn't feel healthy. I'd add dorms because parties are awesome. And it'd be more, it'd be more lifelike and fun. Internet connection. That's all, really. Like, it goes down a lot, but that's about it. That's really minor. For every one thing someone doesn't like about BCC, there's at least 20 different things about why they like about BCC. My name's Sim Burris, and thanks for watching. With the recent tragedies that have swept the nation, our team wanted to know if BCC students knew what to do if such an event were to happen. Our very own Adam Kitchen talks to Steve Ozug about what to do in case of an emergency. Among the terrible school shootings and bomb threats that have headlined across the United States, we were interested if BCC students knew the right case of action if something like this were to happen at BCC. We talked to a few students earlier today, and this is what they had to say. If there is an evacuation, I am running off the campus as fast as possible. Um, well, I leave as fast as I can. I notice there are signs to follow, but I'm not really sure about it. I calmly get up and head towards the nearest exit. Run off campus. <laughs> um, honestly, I do not, but if I guess, probably just leave or something. I don't really know. We also talked to the vice president of BCC, Steve Alzac, to get his viewpoint on what we should use just in case an emergency does happen. Every student should have the mindset that they are going to personally be prepared for an emergency or for a crisis. So if an evacuation was called, and it was an evacuation where you needed to get away from the grounds as far as you can, as quickly as you can, the last thing you want to do is jump in your car because that will guarantee you you'll be sitting there for the next hour. We just want you a safe distance from the building you're not going to be getting in your cars at all in that case, but we need you to go to one of the identified uh, assembly zones, we're calling them. And we, what we did is we built a 500-foot perimeter around the buildings of the campus. And anywhere outside of that 500-foot perimeter is considered one of those assembly zones. So the 500-foot zone, just to put it in perspective, without having to remember where they exactly are, would be the far side of the pond on the north end of campus, all along Ellsbury Street, uh, on the sidewalk, along Ellsbury Street, or lots 6 through 10. For more information about what to do in case of emergencies, go to Bristol Community College's website and look up evacuation procedures on their homepage. For now, this is Adam Kitchen from Student to Student. Mm, it's always good to be prepared. For more info about campus evacuation, contact Vice President Steve Ozug at 508-678-2811, extension 2150. Lucia McGuire covered the Berkeley College Jazz Festival, an annual event every September in the heart of Boston. The event features three stages of music, children's activities, food, and crafts. The Berkeley Beantown Jazz Festival in the historical south end of Boston block party with surprise street performances. Bye.
world-class music on three stages, great food, and crafts that stretch six blocks of Boston's historic South End. Jazz Festival provides fun for the entire family. For more information, go to their Facebook page or website. <clears throat> Today we hear from an avid young musician on his current projects as Clark Miller interviews student Justin Perry. Meet Justin Perry, a 21-year-old drummer from Dartmouth, Massachusetts. He has been drumming for three years. Justin likes long walks on the beach, petting rabbits, and has hosted a radio show at Framingham State. I play the drums. Justin Perry. I've been a drummer for about three years. It's definitely become one of my favorite hobbies by far. If you drive by Justin's house, you can often hear him practicing drums in his garage. How did I get into drumming? Well, I listened to a lot of music growing up and it inspired me to make music of my own. I realized that I was a natural at drumming. So I began teaching myself, practicing for hours on end, playing whatever came to mind. Over time, I got better. I must say, I'm very proud of my progress. For more information on Justin and his projects, look up Jerry Puston on Facebook or go to facebook.com slash comedos1. Thank you for watching this month's Around BCC. Now back to Keith. Thanks again and great job to the students in the fall 2013 television production class here at Bristol Community College. That'll do it for Around BCC for this month. We take over the show again for March. Until that time, I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching. Bye.